Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're looking at critical price levels for breaking into more bullish territory and also some support levels. Should we see a dead cat bounce, basically where we drive the price up and then the market dump? Remember, not all dips are created equal, as we're going to look at on the chart today, plus some do your own research uh, information, some news, some info from Kathy Wood, ARK Invest. All right, so with that said, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, all the good stuff. Join me on Twitter and Instagram, daily Q and A's over there. So Instagram link is down below. I'm answering all your investing, cryptocurrency, finance questions and property cycle. Remember, we've got that in full action at the moment. So Instagram, let's dive in. Coin market cap updates. We're going to take a look at the market capitalizations of our top cryptocurrencies. Remember, we're looking at the market cap, the 1.7 trillion. Now, we can just read these numbers off and they might not mean anything to, to most people. But the point with the market cap is we're looking for support and resistance levels of the overall market cap as well. You can find this chart in particular in uh, trading view under total. All you have to do is type in total and that will give you that chart. Uh, basically, our halfway point, which is our support, is $1.33 trillion. So we're above and we're holding above there for now at around $1.7 trillion. And we, we've been slowly climbing, but this could be a dead cat bounce. We'll have a look at that in the chart in just a moment. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and a quick look at Binance as well. So taking a look at their market caps, $700 billion, $317 billion. We've seen uh, an increase on some of these other uh, smart contract coins in the top 20. Solana's up again around 10% over the last 24 hours. So it is starting to put in its its move. Um, Polygon has started to slip. Remember this went on around a 220% increase and now it started to fall. So those people who are raving on about profits, they're not profits until they're banked. Just remember that. And remember that from our crash that we just had. You know, everyone's like, oh man, I should have taken profits. We saw the market drop. Put it into your plan. If you don't have a plan, I'll show you one in just a sec. Uh, theta is also on the climb at around 20%. So the fear and greed index is showing us 27, where we've gone from extreme fear to fear. So there's less fear in the market, obviously, when you look at an indicator like that. But talking about a plan, 20th of May, 22nd, 23rd, 24th of May, all these days, are below 15. So I did a video, just I had a theory, I put something together. Some people will like it, some people won't. You know, I always get that in the comments. I'm just like, look, it's just a plan and continue to work on it. If this is going over your head, check out this video here. Ultimate Crypto Crash Strategy to Buy Bitcoin. Remember, remember they're actually urgent videos. This is the actually urgent stuff. So this plan, essentially, all I'm thinking about here is every time the fear and greed index drops to 15 or lower, buy Bitcoin. That's as simple as it is. Because over the history of this, if we look at the max, uh, it shows a lot of these times were pretty reasonable buy zones. And in that video, I show specifically uh, the price points at where we were buying if we were following a plan like this. Nothing is 100%. Just remember that. Nothing is 100%. If you're trying to look for that holy grail, you won't find it. But good luck on the journey to that holy grail. Uh, so with that, these are the other videos I've got on the channel. Check out the last ones on Cardano. Check out the Bitcoin bear market, which went through specific criteria that was met when we were talking about the potential fall in Bitcoin. At the time, I was a pessimistic paper hands, whatever the buzzword is. Um, that's what I was being called. But these, this is what happens at tops of the market. This happens every single time. Everyone is so enjoy and so in love with their shit coins that they hold and their meme coins and their safe moons that they they don't see what's coming and you know they just start to shoot down a messenger I'm, I'm you know i'm no god at this thing but you can really see a lot of the crap that goes on it's highlighted here as well from someone who is not even a trader has never traded in his life uh, old mate alex becker the thing that he has that the majority of noob investors don't have is that he understands emotion, emotions and market psychology because I guess if you believe what he does is, uh, you know, he's got his Amazon shops and understands how to draw people's emotions in with his writing. So he does that with his talking as well. And so from that experience, 
you can see what is happening in the markets and you can see these sort of turns that are that are coming through and then you base that with what the sentiment is in Twitter, on YouTube, like this period here in May where it was, let's go to $80,000 Bitcoin. Obviously, we were nowhere near that $80,000 Bitcoin. So I just look at the charts and the volume was down. The price wasn't moving very far. It was taking a lot of push. And now through the bottom, we see a, a Wyckoff method video go viral and it's sort of explaining how this works. Uh, when you relate the smart money and the dumb money, what the whales are doing with the big money and how they're manipulating the market. This happens in every single market. And if you want to blame someone else, the way I look at it is I blame myself if I get something wrong. If I blame someone else, I lose all of that power and I can't improve myself. So that's that's my little rant when it comes to the fear and greed, the planning, what's happening next, critical support levels we'll look at in just a sec. But I want to touch on ARK Invest. So talk about doing your own research. ARK Invest, they have $53 billion of assets under management. Kathy Wood is the owner, 50% owner, but she was the founder in 2014. Check them out on YouTube as well uh, if you want to know where this information comes from. I'd rather listen to this sort of stuff than like new people that are just sort of spouting off more and more news. These guys manage $53 billion. They have a research team. They put papers together. They, uh, they're obviously professionals in their field. Doesn't mean I have to take everything that they say as gospel, but I'm going to at least or learn from them and use that in my own way. So the videos that I'm talking about here, are, they're reports, they're half an hour long. If it's too boring and you'd rather get your news from a 15 or 11 minute video, you know, I, I can't stop you from doing that. But if it's me, this is where I'm going. I'm looking at this sort of stuff. What's happening with Bitcoin? What's happening long term? We see dumps in the market from tweets. Does that really matter long term? No. Does it scare new investors because they want to sell out and then buy back lower? Yes. But then if we marry that with, say, Wyckoff method, understanding what smart money would do, they're probably going to lose out. The new investors are most likely going to lose out. Otherwise, they wouldn't be the new investors. They'd be the old investors. They'd be understanding what's going on. So essentially, what I'm talking about here is the, the news, uh, well, at least Kathy's comments here, December 5th, it's still relevant. There's other videos as well talking about, uh, you know, institutions are going to take this to 500K. Watch the videos because this talks about at what timeline approximately, years to come and reasons why, what we've seen institutions do over the last 50 years. They, uh, well, sorry, funds getting into real estate in the 1970s, they start to dip their toes in half a percent, one percent of their managed funds. And then they were going into five percent. And of course, now they own far more than five percent of real estate. They did the same thing with emerging markets in the 1980s and 90s, say Southeast Asia and uh, South America. You start to dip their toes in, wait for market corrections, dip more of their toes in, and that's the way they can get into a market. They can't just go into a market and buy at the market price at the tops. It, it just doesn't work. So that's the sort of research that I was looking at here with Kathy, uh, Kathy Wood from ARK Invest, explaining that in terms of Bitcoin. And so the, prob well, the dips that we're seeing now are around um, energy consumption. You know, maybe we think it's real, maybe we don't. Maybe we've seen the reports to say that it doesn't really mean too much for Bitcoin in terms of uh, the energy that it uses and how that has been debunked already. Nonetheless, this is the narrative for Bitcoin at the moment, which has dropped the price by about 50%. This gives a good opportunity for institutions to be buying in uh, so that they're not buying the tops. And this is kind of the game that Kathy is explaining here that they will play all the way into the $500,000 Bitcoin in years to come because they, they obviously can't just buy billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin at the one time. That's, not, that's unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, they can't play that game. So we just have to see what they're doing and that's why we use the Wyckoff method to check the price, the bars, against the volume to see what's going on. Now to Twitter. So this post in particular, nearly 3,000 votes. I'll call it 3,000 for now. We've got around 40% of people saying, yes, they will take some profits if the altcoins continue to run. So if we see this rally continue up, 40% of people are looking to take some profits. Now, this just sort of plays into the whole dead cat bounce. We see a rally, people take profits because they want to get out and feel 
a little bit safer now, get some money off the table after missing the dump, and then we see the market correct. Where that correction comes is the most important part. So I'll, I'll look at that on the charts in just a moment. So if you're not already, follow me on Twitter, easy done. And uh, you know we start to talk about actual ideas that are coming together in the market. So I'm using this in particular because it lays well into the Bitcoin dominance um, theory that I'm also looking at here. Bitcoin dominance is finding another low, but it's a higher low than the previous low. So in that case, we could potentially, it's not guaranteed yet, but this is the, the most bullish that the Bitcoin dominance has looked since, <laughs> since back in November. So that's a long time to be bearish on, uh, on the Bitcoin dominance. So we got a top in January. So we saw it run up into December and then we got a top in January and we've been down for about five months. Now we're starting to see a higher low. So the first target is around 46%. Then we go up to around 48 and 50%. Now, if you're finding it a bit difficult to follow, what the hell does all that mean? Essentially, Bitcoin dominance is where the money's flowing. Is it flowing into Bitcoin or is it flowing into alts? Now, if majority of people are looking to take some profits, Potentially, they'll be taking profits on their altcoins and we'll start to see the dominance of Bitcoin increase. This looks like a bullish, well, this is a bullish pattern at the moment. It's yet to be seen whether it will play out into the bullish sense, whether it will go up, but this is a bullish pattern, especially after such a long drop and we got our double top, we hit our 200% target, dead on, again, numbers, easy done. So that sort of leaning into the early signs that we may get a bit of a pump on Bitcoin and then maybe a little fall. So let's look at the Bitcoin chart now, and I want to look at some critical levels, which, you know, we covered back on the 18th of April after our first sign, then our second sign as it broke through on the 23rd of April, all of these signs to start consolidating out of positions. That's what I was doing. That's what I was talking about on the channel. You can go back and check those videos out six weeks ago near the top. Now we're seeing the market slowly rally on low volume. Yes, just a few hours ago, we had an Elon Musk tweet and it just dropped the market, what, 3%? Didn't really do that much. And so those sort of things are telling me that the market is kind of getting sick of the, the tweets and they're not doing as much, or at least maybe there's just not that much interest in the market at the moment, which we're seeing that with the, the low volume. So on a, on a daily chart, this is where we're sitting. We're still sitting above 50%. So that's a good sign for us that uh, that we're holding the 50% at 34K. The next 50% from the low to our top before we broke down is at around 45K. So 45 is the level to break and hold above. Until we get there, it's still anyone's game. And we're just looking at it in terms of it's slightly bullish at the moment or it flips slightly bearish or it just sits in an undecided territory at the moment. So that's pretty much where we're at for Bitcoin. The the prices that I'm looking at, we go back down to the four hour and again, back to the Wyckoff method. We're looking at this bar right here. Oh, and this one here. So let's go back the closest one and then we then we work backwards. This bar here at the top is around 41,800. We want to get above that and close above it because that basically takes out all of the fear in the short term, all of the sellers that were in the market from that point wiped clean and then we start to build the foundation from that point so basically we just need to wipe the, f the fear out and start to build higher and higher on the on the support on the on the uh on the bullish side so once that's done then we look higher next one is 45k so first level is 42k that's that's the critical level 42 then 45 45 is my big one as well all right, so if this happens to all fail and break down, we obviously the next target for the low is the 33,000, roughly 33,400. So we break down, get some closes below there. This thing's probably going to go lower. At the moment, we're leaning slightly bullish because we are in an uptrend, higher lows. We're still getting there. Let's see what happens over the next few hours. Probably by the time this video goes live, you might have seen a crash from this point. We get a breakdown from that four hour bar at 37,400. We get another low here at 37,100. So this is still sort of sideways chop. I'm not too concerned with it until we either break above 42 or we break down below these lows at this level here at around 33,000 and a half. Okay, so that's Bitcoin. Now Cardano, we talked about this yesterday. So just a quick update from it. There's our big washout bar. That's the real fear. People were still joyous at this point. 
oh, look, I don't want to toot my own horn here, but we put a video out at these dates here on the 18th of May. I said, this is probably a top and I'm selling some Cardano because I want to buy back lower. You know, it's on the channel. The videos are there. Okay, uh, so I want to get back above this price here, two dollars and four. So look around the two dollars and five, two six, two ten. Give it a few cents just to make sure. That's pretty much the point there, and we're getting very much closer to it. However, volume is dropping. If you want more info on that? Go and check out yesterday's video on Cardano. Ethereum's up next. We're getting higher highs. It's looking good. We definitely want to get this breakout above three thousand dollars because top, another top, another top. It's really starting to get rejected at this point. The bar that I'm looking at. If we zoom in a little more, we got the fear just here on the uh, on the 19th of May. That was the first little bar. That's the four hour uh, yes, the four hour bar. 19th of May, 2 p.m. That's the first one. Next one. Next one. So that high is at around 3,130. I'm keeping my eye on that. Plus, remember the 50% zone on a macro time frame. So the high is at around 4,400 to the low. There we go, $3,000. So you can see how they're all lining up. So if we can get that break, this is a very critical point for Ethereum. So if you can get above that point, that we're around uh, the $3,100 and hold a few closes, I'm much more bullish on it, all right? So that's what I'm waiting for, for a more bullish momentum continuation for ETH. Now, BNB, there's the bar. Just wanted to have a quick look at this. That's the big breakdown. 19th of May, 10 a.m. High on that day is at $516. We're climbing our way back slowly, just like we are on all the other charts. So this is a, another critical level for uh, for Binance as well. Now, ETH BTC. I just wanted to have a look at this. It looks like we've got a little double top here. We are on a weekly chart, so it's a macro time frame, much bigger time frame. Uh, this could potentially drop us back to our 50% point or further. So I'm looking at around that 5%. So from around 7 0.2% down to our 5%, we're looking at about 30 odd percent loss. On our ETH BTC, it's got nothing to do with the US dollar from this chart, just uh, how strong ETH is to Bitcoin. So keeping an eye on that, this is the weekly chart, remember, so it could take several weeks. This is not going to be an hourly or a daily thing, just remember that. For the haters of my thumbnails, it looks like I need to step up my thumbnails. They need to be crazy, like crazy scientists with a white lab coat and crazy hair if I'm ever going to get featured with Ben Cohen. So uh, yeah, go and let Ben know I got to up my thumbnail game. So today we looked at the critical levels. That's why I'm looking at them. Wyckoff method shows me that's the breakdown point. That's the change of behavior from those bars. Obviously from the volume and the price, that's the level that the market wants to try to recover to, to give it a sign of strength again. And then we looked at the support levels. Should we get a dead cat bounce and a drop? We don't want to see the market go below the low on the 19th of May. Those were the critical lows. And on Ethereum, it did go a little lower on the 23rd of May, but it's now recovered pretty well. It's recovered stronger than Bitcoin has as well. So looking at those critical levels, should we see a dead cap bounce rise and then a drop? That's the bounce. Well, we've bounced and we're up and we fall away again. If there's a whole lot of fear, the idea is we want to see that low. Wherever that fear stops us, check that low compared to the 19th of May low. That's part of the, the Wyckoff method as well. So I hope you enjoyed that. You found some value from it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. I've also got the, uh, the Investor Accelerator Cardano staking pool. I'll leave a video to that at the end of this one if you guys want to learn how to stake your Cardano to earn passive income on it at the end of the video. Check that out. Uh, also follow me on Twitter, Instagram for daily Q&As. And of course, like you saw, posts and uh, crypto news on Twitter. The free newsletter went out today. Leave your email address down below. That's enough from me. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.